Akira Tachibana, a reserve and reticent high school student and a former track runner, has not been able to race as well as she used to since she experienced a severe foot injury. Although she is deemed attracted by her classmates, she is not interested in any guy around her school. While working part-time in the garden cafe, Akira begins to develop feelings for the manager, a 45-year-old man named Masami Kondo. Despite having a large age gap, Kondo shows genuine concern and kindness towards his customers who come to his restaurant which everybody else views as soft and weak, but it was something that drew Akira to him. While spending time together in the restaurant, they grew closer, which only strengthened her feelings towards him. Weighed down by these uncertain emotions she's feeling for the first time in her life, Akira decided to confess, not knowing what would be the result of her newfound resilience. Akira was in her class after school hours, just laying down on the desk and listening to music. Suddenly, her phone rang with a reminder of her work and she got up. Akira was a beautiful high school girl with long hair and sharp, neat features, which attracted everyone around her. A guy came into the class and greeted her while she was getting ready to leave. The guy started saying that their meeting after school hours was designed by fate and they should exchange their phone numbers. After his rambling, he shoved his phone towards Akira, but saw that she was already gone. She silently walked through the school campus and saw the athlete team of their school preparing for their running practice. She watched them for some time and went on her way. She worked at a family restaurant cafe after school and got ready. She served the people and saw the manager, Masami Kondo, apologizing to a customer. Another staff told her that Kondo was pathetic. All he does is keep apologizing to customers without standing up for himself even once. It was due to his submissive personality he would only remain a manager. Even though the lady was bad-mouthing Kondo, Akira had a source of admiration in her eyes for him. Kondo came back and asked the chef kindly to prepare the food once more and the chef reminded him of his open pant chain. Kondo saw Akira's lunch and told her to eat more as she was a growing girl and needed more nutrition. She would shrink if she kept eating so little and laughed, saying that he was kidding. Akira went to the resting room and saw a boy sitting in the room. She asked the staff lady about the boy, and she told her that he was Kondo's son. The tray of food fell from her hands, and she looked at Kondo with hurt written all over her face. He asked her if she was okay, and she said that she was fine and went back. Yudo, his son, was studying, and Akira sat with him with her lunch. Yudo completed his homework and brought out his flute. He started practicing and Kondu came quickly to tell him to stop as he was disturbing the customers. Yudo said that he had a recording tomorrow at school and needed to practice. Kondo told him no and went back. After a while, Kondu came to check on him and couldn't find any of them in the room. It turns out Akira was helping Yudo to play the flute properly. It was the first time he could play it so well, and he became happy. She thought Yudo had his father's eyes. Kondo found them and apologized to Akira, who had to take care of her. She told him that there was no need to apologize and went back inside. The staff lady was again complaining about Kondu and sloppiness. She said that he was sloppy in his work and with his clothes. It was due to his sloppiness that his wife got sick of him and got divorced. Akira was surprised and broke some plates again. Kondo came to check on her and this time Akira had a strong yet strange expression on her face which made Kondo scared, thinking she was going to punch him. Akira was sitting alone during lunchtime when some classmates of hers came and sat down with her. They asked if she wasn't going to eat more, but she said she felt sluggish if she eats like before without practicing. Suddenly, the girls squealed because of the soccer team captain, Yamamoto. They were saying how cool and handsome he was. Akira said that he was not her type. The girls asked about her preference, and she said that she liked men who had bed hair and have the fly of their pants down. She also liked it when they sneezed loudly. The guy from before heard it and acted that way, but Akira didn't spare him a glance and left. She was standing near the terrace when the track team member and friend Haruka came. Akira talked to her and said that the tournament was nearing, so they had a lot of pressure on their hands. Haruka became sad and said that it would have been great if she was also in the team. Akira didn't say something to that and smiled. She told her to complete their track practice today because it was going to rain. She knew it because her injury was acting up already. She went to the restaurant and asked another staff member named Yu about the type of guys she liked. Akira asked her about Kondo, and at that moment, he was hiding near the wall. He didn't mean to do that, but hearing his name suddenly, he was shocked. Yu said that she didn't like men like Kondo because he smells. He entered at that moment, and awkwardly greeted them. He went back to change and made notes that he should be careful with body odor and not make weird puns. Akira was eating lunch and she saw the shirt that Kondo had left after changing. She remembered about the day she had first met Kondo. She was on her way back from the chiropractor and it started raining midway. She saw the garden cafe in front of her and went there. She sat down solemnly and watched the gray clouds hovering over her head as well as her heart. 
That was the moment when Kanda came into her life with a cup of coffee and magically manifested a milk cup, along with the hope that the rain would stop soon and the clouds would go away. She had the coffee and saw that the clouds had gone away, and what came were the rays of sunshine shining upon her. Now back in the present, she held the shirt and smelled it with great satisfaction. Suddenly, Kondu entered the room and saw her, but she acted like nothing happened and sat down to have her lunch. It was raining and Akira handed over her work schedule to Kondu after everyone left. She was staring intently at him and he was scared. She asked him if he had a messenger app or ID. He said that he didn't have one and she left greeting him. He saw her going and the blonde guy from before again came to talk to Akira. He saw himself in the guy and shut the window over his silly thought. The guy wanted to ask for her number, but again, Akira left before he could ask for it. She went back home and blushed over the thought of Kondo's shirt. Akira was on the train, sitting alone and on her way to the restaurant. Everybody was working as usual, including Akira. Kondo gathered everyone around and told them that a new part-time worker was going to join them. He introduced them to the blonde guy from before, but now he had a name. His name was Yoshizawa and he was going to join the kitchen staff. He had joined the restaurant as a worker to be close to Akira, whom he had a crush on. Yu instantly took a liking towards him. Yoshizawa tried to show off his skills to Akira, who wasn't interested at all, but it impressed Yu. She asked him if they were from the same school and class. He said yes, and after that, Yu asked if he was popular in her class, to which Akira said no, but it didn't affect Yu's mood at all, who was totally smitten with his overenthusiastic behavior. Kanda heard that they were from the same class and remembered that Yoshizawa was the guy from the previous day. He scorned happily and truth to be told, quite creepily, over the thought that being young was so nice. Yu noticed him and he quickly left to save himself some leftover face. Yu asked Akira what makes her heart flutter. They talked about many things and suddenly Akira thought of Kondo. She didn't say anything after that and left to look at Kondo, who was working at the counter. She saw that a customer had left his phone and took it to Kondo. He rushed to give it back to the customer but saw that he was on a bicycle, so he wouldn't be able to catch up with him. Meanwhile, the staff at the restaurant were asking Yoshizawa about Akira because they thought he might know her well as they were from the same class. Yoshizawa said that he didn't know much except the fact that she could run really fast. She ran so fast that she could even cut the wind. They asked if they didn't have a track team in their school for her to join. He said that they did have one and she was a part of it. They were surprised that she was working here instead of being on the team. He said that she had left the team six months prior due to an injury she had. On the other hand, Akira took the phone from Kandu's hand and ran. Soon she reached the man and gave him his phone back. Kandu was surprised to see her run so fast and praise her a lot, but Akira suddenly fell on the ground due to the pain. He quickly went to bring the car and lifted her up as she couldn't stand up on her own. Akira told him that she was fine as it was not a grave injury and told him to take her to a nearby clinic where she goes for checkup. The doctor told Kandu to calm down who was very hyper. He told Akira to take off her socks, but she didn't want to do it in front of Kondo. She told him to go back to the restaurant as he had worked there. He told her that he would bring her clothes and stuff back, but suddenly remembered about Yoshizawa and told her that he would send him with her stuff. She asked about the reason behind sending Yoshizawa, and he said that it was because he was her boyfriend. Akira shouted that he was not her boyfriend and told Kondu to go and look after the restaurant. The doctor apologized to Akira for not considering the fact that she might not want to show off her scar to other people. Akira thought to herself that it was not the reason and went back home after getting treated. At home, she remembered how Kondo had touched her to pick her up and became happy. She painted her nails, which was the reason for her not wanting to show Kondo her feet because they were not painted before. Suddenly, she had a call, and it was from Kondo. He apologized for overworking her. He had heard from Yoshizawa that she had a prior injury in her leg and told her to rest for some days until she fully recovers. After hanging up the phone, she thinks how, along with pink daisies and shoes with ribbons, there was also Kondu who makes her heart flutter. She saved his number in her phone and went back to sleep. She was getting all bored at home and decided to go to the convenience store, but on her way, she saw Kondu who was going to her house with the intention of apologizing to her parents for letting her get hurt. They went to a restaurant to sit and Akira said that it was not his fault, so he didn't have to apologize. It was her decision to run, and now she had caused him problems with the restaurant work. She told him that her injury was not that grave. He looked at her feet and asked if they were red due to injury. She said that they were painted and laughed at his silliness. He went to bring the coffee and thought how she looked more mellow than usual. He felt a sense of nostalgia in his mind. He asked Akira why she went so far to join the garden as she could work here near her house. She said that there were not so many places here and said that she liked him. Kandu laughed happily and said thanks to her, not getting her actual intentions. He said that he thought she hated him and was happy to know that it was not the case. He went to bring some more food for her, leaving Akira with her parfait. 
Akira was imagining the whole confession in her mind after coming back home. She kept replaying it in her mind and tried to decipher the reaction Kondo had given her. He had said thank you to her and laughed heartily, but he didn't get the actual intent behind Akira's confession. She didn't know what to make out of that and thought if she confessed in the wrong way or that she should have tried a different way of saying it. She removed her nail polish and was depressed the whole day thinking of her failed confession. She heard her friends talking and wanted to ask them, but after a while, she changed her mind and told them that it was nothing. Her friends were worried about her and thought if it was her injury that was bothering her, but nothing came out of Akira, even after their efforts. She was on her way home and Yu sent her a message saying everything was fine at the restaurant and told her to get well soon. She stumbled upon a junior named Ishii, who was also a part of the track team. She asked Akira how she was and told her that she was also going to take part in the tournament. But she was worried because she wasn't as fast as Akira and afraid that her slow speed would leave her behind everyone. She asked Akira for help and told her that her advice would be of great help for them. She took Akira with her to the track. Akira sat near the track on a desk and saw Ishii running. But in her mind, it was she who was running, not Ishii. She couldn't bear to see it anymore and got up to leave. Haruka and Ishii came and told her that they were going to a family restaurant for lunch and asked her to come with them. She said that she was fine, but they kept on insisting. Suddenly, a girl said that Akira was also working at a restaurant, which was unsettling for them. Akira asked the reason behind it, and they said that it was hard for them to imagine Akira, who was a naturally blunt person, working in the service industry. They suggested that they should go there to have lunch, but Akira said that they shouldn't go as it was very far away and left in a hurry, leaving everyone shocked. Akira was in deep thought while walking back home. It was raining hard and the pain in her leg came back along with the painful memory of her leaving racing. It all started as a normal discomfort in her leg. Everybody told her to take it easy, as she was the rising star of the track team. She said that she was fine and ran as usual, but suddenly a stabbing pain blurred her vision and she fell. The doctor gave her the bad news and she was left in silent despair with only a pair of crutches to support her. It was during that time she went to the garden cafe and met Kondo. It was his kindly spoken casual words that made its way into her heart, giving her support. Maybe she came to like him since that day, but what was sure now was that she did like him. She went towards the cafe and Kondo was still doing some work there. He saw her all drenched and told her to come in, but Akira did not go in and stood there. Just like the sudden rain, she told him that she liked him and walked away into the dense pouring of rain. Kandu stood there for some time, not getting what just happened. He sat in his car for a long time and heard the rain dripping on the roof of his car. He didn't know how to face Akira or what to say to her. Akira came back to work and Kandu noticed that it was like usual and nothing had changed. He was confused about whether it was a dream or not. He was feeling down because it was like nothing had changed. He thought maybe they were pranking him while Yoshizawa was making a video of his reaction. He was feeling sad and disturbed over that thought. Akira came and told him that her mother said thanks to him for the gift he had sent. He was totally baffled and kept blubbering over the gift but went silent when Akira said that she lied to him and wanted to know his answer about how he felt towards her. Yu came in and asked if Akira wanted to go to karaoke with them but she said no giving her leg injury as an excuse. After Yu left, Kandu told her that he would drop her home as she felt pain in her leg, and they also ought to talk about this situation. In the car, Kandu said that he could not give an answer because it was very unusual. There was a huge age gap between them making him almost the same age as her father, and people would also say many things. It would seem like compensatory dating. But Akira retaliated saying he wasn't her father, and she did not care about what others would say because she truly liked him. He was baffled over the intensity of her confession and stopped the car. They went to a park nearby and stood under a tree. Kondo told her that it didn't need any reason to fall for someone who is the same age, but it certainly did need a reason to fall for somebody like him. Akira said that she just liked him. He imagined what would have happened if he was also a 17-year-old boy to whom this girl had confessed. He told her to reconsider, as he was just a 45-year-old with no hopes or dreams, an empty middle-aged man. Akira laughed and said that he called himself a boy and it was the first time she heard him talk like that. He didn't know what to do and said that she would feel creepy if she goes on a date with him. Akira got excited to hear that he would go on a date with her and pined over it. He thought about how even his casual remarks were making their way into this young girl's heart. Akira couldn't help but replay the conversation between her and Kondu about the date. When he had casually mentioned Akira feeling creepy when she would go on a date with him, Akira had felt that a new opportunity was open in front of her. She said now that he had uttered the word date, he had to take her out on a date. He was totally baffled for a while but accepted that he had indeed talked about a date under the scrutiny of Akira's piercing gaze. Akira was in her class, thinking about all this while doodling Kondu's picture in her book. She got ready for work and greeted Kondu as usual. 
She saw the work shift roster and noticed that both she and Kondo had a day off on Saturday. She told him about that and said that it would be the perfect day for their date. Kondo got panicked and said that he was just giving an example by mentioning the date, but Akira insisted on going on a date this Saturday and Kondo could do nothing but agree at her insistence. Taking triumph in her hands, Akira went out to set on work. She went to wash her hands first where Kay's the part-time chef of the restaurant was talking on his phone about part-time tutoring a high school student. He was a little distracted after seeing Akira but got hold of himself in time. He hung up the phone saying that he would only consider tutoring if it's a cute high school girl. He looked at Akira and thought that she was a very calm girl despite her young age and even a bit impassive, as she rarely shows any emotions on her face. He fantasized about her a bit but came back to reality as it was not going to happen. He asked her what she wanted to eat for a snack and as usual, she took a sandwich. He even decorated the plate a little differently from usual, saying it was a treat from the house and Akira just went away, saying Ak. Case was feeling a little duped over her unfriendly behavior. He went to the room and saw that Akira was already finished with her lunch. He sat at the table and asked if she was reading. She said yes and got up to work. He asked her to lend him the book for a little while, as it had been a long time since he had last seen a high school book. She gave him the book and asked him to keep it in place after reading. She went off to work leaving Case in the room but she suddenly remembered about her doodling of Kondo. She quickly went back and saw that he had already seen the doodle. He told her that it was not good to doodle in her books. She told him not to tell anyone about this. He said that he wouldn't tell anyone and keep his secret. But he had a condition. He told her to go out on a date with him. She went with him, but despite his efforts to catch her attention, Akira remained uninterested and impassive. They went to watch a movie and after the movie ended, Akira said that she had to go and offered him the money he had spent on their outing. He asked her for dinner, but she denied it. He took her hand and went to a cafe to have some tea. He asked her about being on the track team, but she said that it was a matter of the past. He apologized for saying something that might have hurt her. She simply said that she was in a depression over that fact, but now she was fine. He asked if it was because she now liked Kondo. He said that it was creepy that she fell for someone as old as him, a 45-year-old man. She got up and ran away from there, getting angry over his words. He caught her hands and she saw that she was getting a call from Kondo. She shook her hands away from him and answered his call. He asked her if she wanted to go somewhere for the date. She said that she would love to go somewhere he wants and hung up the phone. Kay saw her jumping in happiness over the call and asked if she liked him that much. He told her that they are never going to be a successful couple, and she should try to like someone else and have a healthy relationship. Akira told him to mind his own business, but <laughs> cheeks. She went away in anger. Next came her date with Kondo, and she came all decked up for him. They went to watch the same movie as before, but this time, Akira was happy. They went to the cafe, and Kondo remembered the time when he went on a first date with his crush and had ordered a black coffee to impress the girl. He had put a lot of sugar in that coffee to make it sweet, just like the one he was having now. He saw all the couples were young and got startled. They went out, and Akira took the receipt as a souvenir of their date. Kondo saw her all young and pretty and felt sad because he can't stand that he is not young anymore. Most of all, he feared getting hurt. He thought that Akira must have disliked the date because he was just an old man. They ended their date, and Kondo was on his way back. Akira thought of running towards him and kissing his cheek but didn't do it in the end. The next day, Akira went to work and saw Yudo standing outside the restaurant. She asked him what he was doing here and took him inside. He had a large box in his hands and after opening the box, everybody saw that there was a hamster in there. He said that his friend had gifted him this hamster and came to show it to his father. But it was Kanda's day off that day and he was not there. Yudo said that he knows where he lives and would go to his house to show him the hamster. Everybody was worried about him going all the way there alone, so Akira told them that she would take him to Kandu's house. They went to his house and Akira's heart was beating fast because of nervousness. She took her and Yudo's shoes and kept them beside Kondo's shoes. The scene made her happy and she looked over his messed up house. Yudo told her to come inside his room and apologize for the mess. She noticed that books and clothes were scattered all over the place in his room. She also saw many books about how to become a great boss and even a magic trick book. She became nostalgic thinking about the time when he had performed a trick for her. It turns out Kondu was not at home. Akira peeked into his study room and saw more books of many literary genres. Yudo said that he was feeling hungry, but there was not much in Kondo's fridge, so Akira decided to make him something from scratch while he was playing with a hamster. She made some Oma rice for him. Suddenly, Yudo heard some footsteps and understood that his father was coming. He took Akira's shoes in his hands and told her to prank his father. When Kondo entered the house, Yudo told him that he had come all the way here alone and even made some Oma rice for himself. Meanwhile, Akira was hiding inside the cupboard. 
Yudo asked what Kondo's plan for the summer vacation was and he said that he didn't get his summer vacation and had to work. Yudo asked him what he did when he was not working. He said that he read books most of the time. Yugo was surprised to know that his father did nothing but just read books. Kondo suddenly said that he went to watch a movie after a long time just recently which startled Akira, and she made some noise. Kondo heard it, but Yudo told him that it was just a ghost. Kondo did not believe him and finally saw the source of noise, which was coming from the hamster box. He was surprised to see a hamster in his house. Yudo said that he needed to keep it in his house. Kondo said that he didn't stay at home most of the time and couldn't care for it, so he should take it to his home. Yudo said that his mother had already said no, so he has to be the one taking care of it. That way, he could also visit him more. Akira was sweating profusely in the cupboard and was getting hotter by the time. She couldn't take the heat anymore and came out of the cupboard, which baffled Kondo even more. Seeing her plight, Kondo told Yudo to bring some cold tea. But in a hurry, Yudo dropped the glass over Akira. Kondo gave her a t-shirt of his own and decided to take the stained shirt of Akira to the laundromat. While he was out, he told Yudo to take care of her. Akira asked Yudo if his father liked books and he said that he liked books of a certain literature. By the time his shirt was cleaner, it started raining heavily. She saw that Akira and Yudo had come to pick him up with an umbrella. They were walking together, and Akira told him that she wanted to know more about him. The conversation was stopped there because Yudo was shouting. The next day at work, Kondu thought that it was supposed to end after the date, but after hearing her say that she wanted to learn more about him, he was confused. Akira came and told Kondu that she wanted to give him something. She had a piece of paper in her hand, but before she could hand him the paper, Yu came and asked him about the hamster. After this, whenever Akira tried to talk to him, she was disturbed by the staff who were all over Kondo due to the hamster topic. Kondo thought that he didn't need all those books in his house, just a hamster would have done the trick to help him communicate with his staff. Akira wanted to ask Yu about Kondo, and she said that he still smelled, but it was awk now that she breathed through her mouth while talking to him. Kondo had heard that and felt sad but still happy that he was accepted. He thought why he was feeling these things so strongly nowadays. It was not like he had changed. He went into the office room. Akira came back with an order and saw nobody was in the kitchen except Case. He told her that everybody was in the room with Kondo. She saw that they were talking and laughing with Kondo. She told everyone to go back to work. She went near Kondo and told him to ask her if he needed to know anything about the hamster. She handed him the note in which she had written everything that was needed to buy for the hamster. They both blushed, looking at each other. Akira had come to the bookstore, thinking about the time when she saw so many books in Kondo's house. She had asked Yuto about Kondo's likes and books, but he just said that he liked a certain type of literature. She was navigating through the books in the library when Haruka and her brother saw her. Haruka's brother told her to go and talk to her, but she was a bit hesitant to approach. Her brother was about to call her when they saw Yu with her. They figured out that she had not come alone there and decided to go back. Haruka thought about the time when she and Akira used to study in the same junior high school. They were also in the same track team, but Haruka had to leave the school because of her father's transfer. Haruka said that they didn't have to stay apart for a long time because they would be together in high school. But after the incident where Akira got injured, their relationship changed. They couldn't talk to each other freely as before, nor did they talk much. There was an invisible wall between them that distanced them from each other. Akira was about to leave from the school when she saw the track team talking. She didn't want to face them and took another route home. She even got a picture of Kondu from Yu. The days were passing idly for Akira. She was sitting at the bus stand and heard some kids talking about a keychain. The keychain was supposed to bring you closer to the person you liked. Akira heard this and decided to buy one too. She was searching through the keychains and Haruka saw her sitting there. She was thinking whether to go to her or not and in the end she went to her. She asked her how many times she was going to try getting a keychain. Akira said that she wasn't getting the special one she wanted. They boarded the bus and went to school together. Akira even gave her some keychains. Haruka wanted to say something to her but couldn't. Akira wished her the best of luck for the race and went to class. Haruka decided to run one last time and remembered how she and Akira used to run together in their childhood. Akira was always a fast runner and used to leave her behind. It was very tough for Haruka to catch up to her. When Haruka asked her why she ran so fast, Akira said that she loves it. She liked how she could only hear the sound of wind while running. It was like she was melting into the sky. It was the first time Haruka also heard the sound of the wind while running. She remembered her words about how they will be together in high school. She called Akira, who was on her way to the library. Akira looked up and caught the special keychain she wanted, thrown towards her by Haruka. There was a note written by Haruka inside it, which said that their friendship is not all about tracks and racing. Akira looked up to see her, but Haruka was gone. She went to the library and saw Kondo, 
who was also seeing books. He saw Akira and greeted her. Akira said that she was a new reader and wanted to try pure literature. He was excited to know that she also liked pure literature like him. She asked him to recommend some books to her. He said that new readers should not read books recommended by anyone because if they didn't like the book, they would force themselves to finish it and would develop a dislike towards reading. He told her that there were a lot of books here, so she could try and see to get the books she might feel drawn to. She went looking for books while Kandu sat down to read. He thought about the time when she said she wanted to know more about him and wondered if it was also a try to know him, but got rid of the thought afterward. He got up as he was done and saw Akira looking at a runner picture book. Akira took the two books she had chosen and told Kandu that he could also borrow a book if he wants, since she had a library card. Kandu suddenly saw a book and took it to borrow. He thanked her for the book and on his way he thought that he was also drawn to this book calling the name Chiharu. Akira was reading the book she had borrowed from the library at home, but all she could think about was that Kandu looked a bit sad the other day while they were in the library. She wanted to say something to him to cheer him up but didn't know how to do so. She didn't want to have this conversation over a phone call, so she dropped the idea. The next day at work, Yu was telling everybody how a friend of hers had a group chat with her colleagues at work supervised by their manager. They thought that Kanu only had a flip phone, so it wouldn't be possible for them to open such a group. Yashizawa said that nowadays they can also use messenger apps in flip phones too. Hearing this, Akira could not control her excitement and joined the conversation, saying that making a messenger group chat would be very helpful. K said that he didn't want to chat with Kandu. He also said that knowing him, Kandu wouldn't even be able to learn the basics of using a messenger app. Everybody agreed with this and dropped the idea, going back to their work. Ekker was happy thinking that if Kandu uses a messenger app, then they can chat together, but even if he doesn't, they could always text each other. She went to the office to have lunch. She wanted to ask him if she could text him, but instead, she ended up saying that the book she had taken for him was very good. Kandu said that the author of that book is very good. Akira asked him if the book he took was good too. He said that it was fine. She again asked him about the book and he replied that it was just a work of pure literature and he was acquainted with the writer of the book. Akira was impressed to hear that and asked if they were friends. He said that she could say so and she said that he was amazing for having such friends. He denied saying that he wasn't amazing but the author was and he was just a middle-aged man. She protested, saying that he was indeed amazing because he reads books and the way he explains them is something only he could do. In return, he said that she didn't know anything about him with a deep sense of melancholy in his voice. The conversation ended right there. The next day, the weather was bad and the typhoon was upcoming. It was raining heavily and Akira's mom told her to take a day off, but she couldn't forget the events of yesterday and went to work anyway. She got to know at work that Kandu was suffering from a cold and there were only a few staff working that day. Akira started working, but the only thought consuming her mind was of Kondo. She could see the blurry visions of yesterday before her eyes and fell down. She quickly finished her work and Kubo told her to take a break. She went to the office where Case also came after a bit to join her. He told her that she looked a bit under the weather. He said that she should take a breather and stop pushing herself. He also told her to stop running after Kondo. He had a position he needed to think of, and all these things must be making him uncomfortable. It might also be a burden for her if she loses the one person she has fun with. Kandu was suffering from a bad cold and resting in his house with nobody to take care of him. He heard the doorbell ring but thought that it must be some salesperson and didn't bother to open the door. But after the relentless ring of the bell, he got up and opened the door, only to see Akira standing in front of him. She didn't say anything after getting into the house and just kept her head low. He asked her if anything happened at work, but she shook her head, implying no. He told her that she always appeared out of nowhere during the rainy days. She said that he was wonderful. Kanda laughed and said he wasn't the type of adult she thinks him to be. He always left things incomplete and didn't have anything to be proud of, but contrary to him, she was the one who was wonderful. Anybody could see that she was full of youth and hope with so much potential to shine in life. She asked him why her heart pains so much then. He said that sometimes youth can be vicious and rough on you, but it will be the treasure of memories that would always stay with her. She asked if her liking him was a burden on him if she was a nuisance in his life. He said that it wasn't the case. When he is with her, he can go back and remember his treasured memories that he had long forgotten. She wasn't a nuisance to him, but it was the total opposite of that. She cried hearing this, and at that moment, Kandu thought that he had to protect her. This feeling he was having would be too frivolous for him to call it love, but he just wanted to hold her at that moment and free her from the anxiety she was having. He hugged her and said to himself that he will stand with her and get drenched in her rain. He would protect her youthfulness and hope that he also feels the same, even if it's only for a short time. He told her that it was only a friendly hug as they were friends and got nervous. He got her a cab and sent her home after that. The next day, 
Kanda came to work and all well, but Akira couldn't come as she had caught the cold. Akira thought of the events of yesterday. Meanwhile, another person was also thinking the same and getting all embarrassed. Akira was all well now. Kandu and Akira both were back to work, and they had newly established their relationship as friends. He wanted to help her now that they were friends. Yashizawa heard this and said that he also wanted to be friends with Kandu. Kandu said that it wasn't okay for a manager and staff to be friends. His bangs were also growing, so he should cut them short in case he gets fired even before he could be his friend and went away laughing. Yui and Akira were having lunch when a sad Yoshizawa came and said that he might get fired because of his bangs. They laughed silently at him and Yui said that she aspired to be a hairdresser, so she could help cutting his bangs. After they agreed on it, Yoshizawa happily went off to work. Yui suddenly asked Akira if she liked someone. Before a fluster Akira could answer, Yui said that she wanted to be a closer friend to Yoshizawa. It was true that she wanted to be a hairdresser, but she wasn't that good yet. She just didn't want to miss a chance with him. She really hoped that things would go well with him. Akira told her that she would get closer to him with time, and they would have more connections with each other. Even though they would start as friends, she was sure that a friendly relation could blossom into a romantic one. Yu became happy hearing that, and Akira also became determined. After work, she went to Kandu and asked that they were friends and friends text each other, so she could also text him. She came out with happiness over the fact that she can finally text him. The next day at school, Haruka was practicing when the famous soccer player of their school, Yamamoto, approached her. He asked her about Akira and why she practiced alone when in the past, she used to always be with Akira. Haruka didn't want to say anything to him and went away. Yamamoto went behind her but couldn't run much due to his knee pain. Haruka stopped and asked him if he was alright. He said that the exams weren't the only reason he had dropped out of the soccer team. Haruka told him that Akira also dropped out of the athlete team due to her injury. She didn't understand why Akira had to lead the team. She didn't even know if Akira wanted to run or not. He asked if that was what Akira had sent to her. She said no, and he said then Akira must want to run. Even if he was distant from soccer, he still wanted to play as much as he could. As a very talented person and the star of the track team, she must have many thoughts in her mind. Maybe she was tense thinking about the recurrence of her injury. People might have many expectations from her, and above all, she must have many ambitions about herself. He said that it was not easy to choose the path she had taken, but she will be fine because she had a friend like her to care about her. Haruka was much relieved hearing this. Meanwhile, Akira was doing her homework while Kandu came in. He asked what she was doing and she said that she was doing some questions for modern Japanese. The book she was reading was something Kandu was familiar with. He decided to help her, and they talked a lot about the storyline. In the end, Kandu thought that the hero of the story depicted youth with a pimple, but he was only a 45-year-old man who can't even have a pimple. The next day, Kandu came with a pimple on his face and Akira successfully completed her paper. She saw the posters about the summer festival. She went with Haruka there, and they enjoyed a lot together like the old times. Haruka came to the festival with her brother and twin sisters. She said to Akira that they were hanging out like the old times. They haven't been able to hang out like that since Akira took her leave from the track team. They play games that they used to play in their childhood. Haruka said that they couldn't even pass the preliminary level during the race. Ishii was feeling very sad and worthless due to this. Akira said that it wasn't the case because they did their best to try and win the race. Haruka was saying that if she could come and watch over their practice, but before she could hear an answer from her, Akira was distracted by someone. She ran towards the shrine where Kandu and his son were standing. She greeted them, and Haruka noticed a blushing look on Akira's face. As an old friend of hers, Haruka could understand the emotions behind that look on Akira's face. When Akira came back, she directly asked her if she liked that man. Akira blushed profusely at her blunt question and didn't say anything. Her reaction was all the affirmation Haruka needed, and she was baffled. She told her how she could like that man who was clearly so very old, and he was even with a little boy who was probably his son. She continued questioning Akira, and she said that she didn't want to talk about this. Haruka didn't back off and said she didn't tell her anything nowadays. She doesn't know what goes on in her mind. They did not even talk like before. Akira said that she could just ask her directly if she has such thoughts in her mind. Haruka said that she made it impossible to talk to her or approach her. She had put a wall between them that stopped her from asking her anything. The twins started crying at her sudden outburst. Akira said that it was because nothing between them was like before and things have changed now. Haruka cried hearing this and went away running, leaving a silent Akira behind. Kandu was walking in the busy street of the town and saw that the bookstore he wanted to go to was closed. He took a look at his watch and went on his way to a restaurant. Some young girls opened the door to the restaurant and bumped into Kondo. The books fell from their hands and Kondo began to pick them up. 
He saw that the book in their hands was the same one from his author friend Chihuru. He went inside the restaurant and saw his friend Chihuru already sitting there. They greeted each other, and Chihuru was surprised that he wanted to see him after so many years. Kandu said that he had many young fans. Chihuru told him about his book and Kandu said he had already read it. Chihuru was happy to hear that and asked how he found the book. Kandu said that he borrowed it from the library and teasingly added that he found it just average. Chikuru showed him the magazine from their high school time that they had published together. Kandu became excited seeing this and said that many memories became fresh in his mind again. He saw the name of his ex-wife in it and became solemn. Chikuru said that he had ditched their trip to India in order to marry Midori, and he used the trip to write a novel and made his debut as a writer. He asked Kandu if he still writes. Kandu said no, but Chikuru refused to believe so as his face was telling otherwise. He insisted that Kandu still wrote and he accepted that he writes, but it's something that wasn't very serious. He just writes sometimes here and there when he gets time, but he hadn't completed a novel in three to four years. It was not something that he could show to anyone. Nobody around him knows that he writes. It was the first time he had talked about this with someone. Shikoru said it was not something that he could be proud of, but if he wanted to talk, he could talk to him anytime. They walked together to sober up and Shikuru told him that the water always reflects the moon, even if it's clear or pungent. They laughed over their cheesy lines. Shikuru took a cab and told Kandu that they weren't adults but classmates. He can call them anytime he wanted to. They bid each other goodbye and Kandu thought about their younger days. He wanted to return to the youthful times and regain those golden memories if he could. Akira saw Haruka at school, but she avoided her. Kandu noticed that Akira was a little down and asked her what was wrong. He said that she had been into a fight with her friends and things have gotten awkward between them. Kandu showed her a full moon and said it was the supermoon that can grant her wishes. Even if she was in an awkward situation with her friend and doesn't know if they can work things out, one thing would always be primary in their relationship, and that was their memories together. They would always have those memories that will be irreplaceable and unforgettable. Akagura wished upon the moon that even if they don't overcome their distance, they should always be together when the right time comes. Akira was clicking a photo of the moon when her mother came in and asked her to throw the old papers away. While doing so, she saw a pamphlet of a secondhand book fair. She decided to invite Kandu to the book fair. She texted him and met at the book fair the next day. She told him to recommend some books to her from the fair as her friend. He said that it was fine and took her to a shop. He introduced her to the old bookshop owner that he always goes to. He asked the bookshop owner if he did not open the store nowadays as he found the store closed the other day. He said that he was getting old and could not work after evening. He told Akira that Kondo had been coming to his shop since his high school days. It was not always that one could see such a bookworm like him. He was surprised to see that Kondo had a daughter this big, but Akira said that she was his friend. Kondo quickly diverted the conversation and said that he needed some books. Akira was navigating through some old postcards that people donated to him. Kondo told her about the shortest letter in the world written by Victor Hugo to his publisher, where they only communicated via question mark and exclamation mark. It was like they could understand each other without even saying anything. The shop owner said that he was still the romantic at heart and told him to watch some books that might interest him. He went off to navigate and he told Akira that Kandu wanted to be a novelist as he was obsessed with it in his young days. After a while, Akira noticed that Kandu was nowhere to be seen. The shop owner said that he was usually like that. He didn't care or listen to anything while he was in the world of books. Kandu noticed that he had left Akira in the shop and saw that he had a message from Akira, which only had a question mark in it. He replied with an exclamation mark and smiled. She told the shop owner that he would return soon and Kandu came back saying sorry for his behavior. He let her choose a postcard as an apology gift and smiled when he saw she had chosen a card that said to meet again in the new season. The doctor told Akira that her wound had healed and she left. The nurse told the doctor that she could run if she moves through rehab, but the doctor said that she had a disinterest towards running. Kandu was having lunch in a shop when he saw an interview of Chikuru. He said in his interview that novels were his lovers. Kanda went to his home and thought that it used to be the same for him too. He looked through boxes of manuscripts that he had written and thought about how much he used to obsess over novels. Soon that turned into a one-sided love as he was hankering after them and hurt his loved ones over this. He went to work the next day and Akira approached him with the book she had bought from the book fair. There was an old bookmark in it, and Kandu said that it was the great treasure that one can find. He told her that there used to be a nest of swallows in here, but they had to break it. He was worried as one bird was weak at flying, but in the end, he flew. Akira asked him, what if the bird couldn't fly? He said then the bird would have forgotten about its peers and found some happiness by staying here. Akira said that his words were beautiful to hear. Someday she wanted to read his words. She knew that he wrote notes for his novels and was sure that she would love his novels. 
Kanda thought to himself that he wanted someone to say that it was alright and thanked Akira in his mind for saying so. Haruka was practicing when she heard the other girls saying that another track team member was back on track after having a similar injury to Akira. They thought if Akira would not join the team again. Haruka didn't say anything and ran. After school ended, Haruka got a message from the group saying that the girl had broken a personal record today. She saw that Akira was going on the other side of the road and called for her. She wanted to run after her, but she was gone before that. Akira handed her schedule for the next month's work. Kandu saw that she planned to work the whole week, but didn't say anything. He was out to buy some books and saw that Chikuru's novel was going to be adapted into a movie. He called him to congratulate and got to know that he was standing outside his house. They hung out like their school days. Shikuru asked where his manuscript that he was writing was and Kandu laughed it away. Shikuru saw his room where he writes and found that he indeed had a manuscript ready. They played the one-minute novel writing game like they used to and Kandu said he couldn't write like before. Shikuru said that he leads an honest life, but it wasn't the fact that he couldn't write now, it was just he won't write. The only thing that is stopping him is himself. Kandu said that he had age and he can't go back to that time even though he wanted to. The next day at work, Haruka showed up. She asked Akira if she didn't want to race again. When Akira did not say anything, she just said that another girl who had the same injury like her had joined racing again and left. She thought about that at night and couldn't sleep. She found another left phone at work, but this time she couldn't run to reach the customer and just stood there motionless. Kanda remembered about their last conversation and asked Akira if she needed more time off. He said that she should work less and do some things that she really wanted to. Akira got overwhelmed and shouted that she didn't want to do anything else. She left the restaurant and got soaked in the rain that hit her tears. Akira received a career path survey from the school and was unsure what to do with it at work. Yashizawa shared this with everyone, sparking a conversation about each other's career perspectives. Kanda found it awkward to face Akira and greeted her before heading to the head office for work. Akira contemplated Haruka's words during work but remained uncertain about her actions. The staff speculated about Kanda's increasing workload at the head office, suggesting he might soon receive a promotion. Meanwhile, Kanda resumed work on his manuscripts. Haruka reminisced about the past, recalling promises she and Akira made to experience the win together. With Kanda at the head office, Akira found Yuto at the office doing his homework. After learning about his fall during track, she agreed to teach him running techniques. Yuto's determination to reach the finish line, inspired by a promise to his father, impressed her. After work, Kanda expressed gratitude to Akira for assisting Yuto with running, acknowledging Yuto's potential and quick learning. Kanda shared his rejuvenated commitment to writing, hinting that Akira might also have a forgotten promise to revisit. Without a direct response, Akira accepted the shift paper from Kondo, thanked him, and headed home. At home, she revisited her old running guides in a book on rehabilitation. The next day, Kondo clarified that he had to retake an exam at the head office, not that he was being promoted. When he forgot his notes, Akira hurried to provide them, asserting her resolve to fulfill her promise. They mutually acknowledged that fulfilling their promises might take time but affirmed their commitment. Akira's message to Haruka about revisiting their shared ambition to see the wind again brought Haruka to tears. Both Akira and Kandu reflected on the enduring significance of their connection, particularly how thoughts of each other would resurface after the rain clears the sky.